Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the a good investment, I would say. And I use that term loosely. So investment, if you want to have fun, if you do not want to have fun and you want to just make money, Magic the Gathering is not probably for you. So I like the Expeditions. And in particular, I like the cheapest of the bunch, which are the... Battle for Zendikar Expeditions. They are around $20. I mean, you can get them on eBay for under $20 for most of them. And the blue ones are very affordable. Now, why do I like them? $20 for a full art land is very cheap. If I look at other full art lands, let's say Unglued or Unhinged, I think Unglued is $40, $50, maybe for islands, $80. Yes, it's an island. I know it's very beautiful and it's played far more than like, let's say a, a marsh or a prairie or a stream. But nonetheless, if you look at foil lands, foil for art, full art lands, they compare very well. And I think in time, they will actually be considered a very good deal. Now, we never know we do not know how important it is that it is dual typed. So we know that, yes, shock lands are good. You can get it via fetch land. You can get these via fetch land too. We don't know if there's a deck in the future that really likes this type of effect, um, having the island swamp. So perhaps they want to play the shock lands for shock lands and they pay play one or two of these because maybe they really need those uh, types, right? Maybe the creature has power and toughness equal to the number of islands or some ability, uh, maybe tribal ability, like tribal flames is a good one. Uh, what domain? They used to, they called it tribal, but now it's called domain where you need one island, one plains, yada, yada. But I don't know. I think it could be possible. I feel like having two types on it is good. And I feel like these just never got their due. They were outclassed by every other single land in the expeditions. They're beautiful. They are gorgeous lands. And yes, I know they've been reprinted as non-foils and non-full art. Would I rather have one of these or a unglued? Okay, so would I rather have four of these or an unglued? Or sorry, not unglued, unhinged. I forgot, unglued. I'm pretty sure it did not have foils. Someone correct me. I've only seen unhinged foils. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I don't think unglued had foils. Uh, unhinged definitely did. And the foil islands are like 80 bucks, something ridiculous. I'd much rather have a play set of these than one foil island from Unhinged. And I feel like these lands will get better in time. And people will appreciate them more. Uh, they are fantastic art pieces. And as I get older, I want to collect magic artwork, but I don't want to pay four figures for it. I would much rather just pay, well, okay. So if I had a painting for $10,000, or would I rather own 50 copies of this I would take the 50 copies put them on you know a frame them up put them on a mat tay, and then off it goes right and then I'll be like cool and then if those 50 copies become you know $50 then I've actually made money as opposed to a painting which may or may not it's too speculative for my taste this is kind of funny right anyway I think these artworks are beautiful I feel like they're being grossly underpriced at this time and in time they will be quite valuable i'm almost certain of it there are certain guarantees in magic the gathering uh, some cards will always be valuable some cards will always be played some cards like seance no matter what people will say or do will always be useless and worth no money no matter how many people burn seance, no, ma many how many, no matter how many people play seance at a pro tour, it's no good. The card's no good. It never was good. Uh, and there's some truths like Falia. Falia is good. She's always been as good as she is today. In fact, she sees probably no more play today than she saw 
five years ago when she was two bucks. Maybe not five years ago. How long was Dark Ascension? So we had Innistrad and RTR. Yeah, probably five years ago, actually. Falia was always good and will always be good. Silence will be bad, is bad, and will always be bad. And these lands are unique. They fit every criteria you would want. Uh, they are affordable to get in. So you can get a playset for under $80 on eBay right now. They will get they will get stronger in time. I'm certain of this. That there will be other cards where you can fetch an island or you can fetch a swamp. Fetch lands are not going to only be the... There will be other cards that need this to be an island, need that to be a swamp. Therefore, it makes sense that it's both. And you get benefit from both. So Tomogoyf is only so powerful, or it used to be powerful. Now it's outclassed by Death Shadow. Tomogoyf is so powerful because Planeswalkers got printed. And card discarding got better. And so many different things. People ask, why was Tomogoyf bulk in Future Sight? It was because it was not good. Why was Lion's Eye Diamond considered one of the worst cards in existence in Miraz? Dredge was not invented back then. So what are you going to play Lion's Eye Diamond in? I remember when um, one of the Eric's, I'm trying, Fifth Dawn was it. Like it has a combo piece. And that was before Dredge. Dredge was our, our original Ravnica. So during Meriden, Lion's Eye Diamond spiked a lot. But when I mean spiked, I mean it went from like bulk to like $10. And people were like, oh my gosh, look at this infinite combo. It's incredible. Then Dredge came along. Why is Lion's Eye Diamond worth what it is today? It's because it's in an eternal legacy deck called Dreads. Dreads did not exist when Lion's Eye Diamond existed. There are certain truths uh, about magic. And one of them is card quality, card strength, card uniqueness does matter. It may not matter today, it may not matter tomorrow. But eventually there will, will be a card or there will be a set that will highlight, like, pirates. Think about pirates, for instance. All these pirates have spiked, spiked up in price because people, very casual people, are looking for more, more pirates for their EDH deck. The reason that those pirates were bulk to begin with was because no one wanted pirates. Now everyone wants pirates. Even I want more pirates. Who could have predicted a pirate set? given how lackluster the pirates have been in the past. I mean, we had the Mirage Pirates, which were really bad, then we had the Mercadian Mass Pirates, which combined, maybe there's like 10 of them total in those two sets, and then we had the Portal Pirates with their guns. Uh, it's not something that you can predict. The key to MTG Finance is very simple. Pick cards that are A, unique, B, look good, and C, that you can hold on to for long periods of time and enjoy I enjoy my failures. I get them all altered and they come back and they look great. I will continue to do this. It got to the point that my artists do not want to buy the failures anymore. They just want me to send it to them because they don't want to make the initial investment, which is fine because I have a couple hundred. So anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below if you agree, disagree, or what. Ex I like the expeditions on a whole. I feel like they're grossly undervalued, and if you were to put your money in anything, wouldn't you put it in the mythic of mythics, right? Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.